are the highlights from last night's green carpet. Stephen Frears presented Tim Bevan with the Career Achievement Award. We're very lucky at Working Title because we've made many movies over the years and that whatever the film that one is making at the moment has to be the most important film that you're involved with. Um, but I think given that we've done so many, it's like it, it's more to do with filmmakers. And I think, you know, so the Richard Curtis uh, pantheon of films, which is gigantic and has lasted nearly as long as Working Title because we first made a film together in 1987 is definitely kind of the epicenter of the, of the company. So Richard's movies, you know, Four Weddings, Notting Hill, Love Actually, tonight's film About Time are very important to us. What were you going to say? Well, I'm not, I'm not going to tell you that. <laughs> <laughs> of course, I know, no, no, I'll say it to Tim. I've known him a long, long time. I've known him forever. Welcome to ZFF Daily, I'm Kristen Vermilia. I'm joined here in the studio today with by actor Melissa Leo and by director Mauro Muller. So thank you for being here, welcome. Well, thank you for having us. You're welcome. Um, Mauro, quick question for you to start off with. This is your second year in the Zurich Masterclass as part of the film festival. Tell us a little bit about what that is and what your experience has been. It's just a really amazing um, environment where directors and producers and editor and all kind of different uh, film professional come in and share their experience with, with us. And I really appreciate it because besides the professional you also get to network actually among the peers, among the other directors and upcoming filmmakers and that's really nice. Fantastic, so it's been a great opportunity. I, I, I love the whole idea. And Melissa, you are president of the International Feature Jury here. I'm not president. You're not? I'm not president. And she I is a, not. I made, a, I made a mistake at the opening ceremony <laughs> because I don't know any Swiss German. I don't know any German. I barely know English. Um, yeah, no, I stood with our jury president, Mark Forster. Right, of course. <laughs> Let that be known that she is not president. Mark, you're still president. <laughs> not, nothing has changed just in the last few hours. So you're on the jury. Is this the first yes. time you've been on a jury? No, I've done some jury work before. Uh, yeah, we were talking with, about shorts, and, and I've done some uh, uh, jurying shorts at Tribeca and uh, in Poland, Krakow. I, I did a jury there. Great. Polish film. Excellent. Well, we're really happy to have you here for that. And um, now we're just going to take a look at some of Melissa's work. Oh, my. Very great. Um, listen, I want to talk to you both about labels. And so you're both Academy Award winners. And what happens when all of a sudden you get labeled an Academy Award winner? What 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 does that do to kind of your your future and, and being just being labeled like that? I, have, I think it's different for you. I think it's maybe maybe a little bit different and, and maybe not so different as you think. And um, it's uh, deep inside of me an honor I never dared even dream of. Um, and the feeling of being included in a group of pretty special performers is, is quite something, um, and, and other filmmaking um, people. And work-wise, there is changes, but I always um, speak the truth. <laughs> And the truth is that the changes are not so vast and different. And what I discover in that is I am still me. Mm. I am who I am, and I've worked for 30 years as an actor, and I'll um, hopefully continue to work for another twice as long. <laughs> yeah, we hope so too. <laughs> and for you? Yes. I mean, it was funny because we had this amazing week in, in LA, and you felt like, oh, you're part of this entire uh, business. And after the week, it was like, okay, now let's go back and work. Mm. Um, and let's do actually what we right. have been doing so far. Um, I, 
obviously things change. I think I have more opportunities now, but nonetheless, I think like I have to do the work. I have to. Uh, so in that res regard, nothing really changed. Mm -hmm. The pressure is maybe. Yeah, and the expectation exactly. that then you you know is that's that that's an added sort of thing. I used to sneak into work and just get my work done and go home. And, and there's a great expectation as I arrive and expectations are dangerous. Yeah, absolutely. <laughs> and having that attached, that label attached to your name forever, which is fantastic, but it is kind of loaded a little bit too. Mm -hmm. So we're going to take a look at Mauro's Academy Awarded, Award winning short, Un Mundo para Raul. Casi. Pues reglas son reglas, ¿no? Uy, estás entendiendo el juego, ¿eh? Bien ahí. Pues. Raúl and his father are going to visit his father's employer, whose son Juan is a childhood friend of Raúl's. When Raúl and Juan first meet again, everything seems fine. But soon Raúl's awareness of Juan and his father's higher social class leads to a power struggle between them. <laughs> Raúl proves that he can handle the conflict better than his father can. Vamos a refrescarnos. Melissa, you did a small part on the TV show Louis, Louis C.K.'s um, show. I have a mad crush on him. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but this, this bit, this little this small part that you did went totally viral on the internet. Everybody was talking about it. I want to talk to you both about so the power of the internet and what it does for your careers and just the future of film. What, let's talk about that. It, it, that was a remarkable thing. I don't have much of a relationship w with with the internet. I do have a, a, an account on a new uh, social network called Huse, and I've been doing a, um, a festival of my shorts on that Huse account. Uh, each month a short, and I get back with the filmmaker and have a discussion and tape that and wow. put that up as, as well. Um, and that's what it made me think, because I do so, so very little on the internet. But I won an Emmy for that performance in Louie, and I'm sure it had a lot to do with it. It went so viral that the network pulled the clip. Right. <laughs> <laughs> it's great. It was a great performance, a great show. Fantastic. And you? I think it's so important. I mean, we're very much aware of the internet and try to use it for our own production company. When we have a film, we try to have a trailer out. We try to also just for networking, using Facebook, using Twitter accounts. Right. So we're going to just switch gears for a minute now. We have a lot of big, heavy documentaries playing at the film festival this year, one of which has to do with the banking crisis, which is actually close to home subject here in Zurich. Let's take a look at Master of the Universe. Master of the Universe is a documentary about the current financial crisis featuring Rainer Voss, a former banker. The film was shot in an abandoned bank building in Frankfurt, Germany, that has sat empty for six years. Voss reflects on his life, his career, and the understanding of the financial sector he gleaned from decades of working in finance. Master of the Universe recently won the jury prize Semaine de la Critique in Locarno. The film is playing at the Zurich Film Festival in the special screening section. Zurich here, where we are, is also a banking city. What would you like the people of Zurich to take away from your film? Start asking questions. I think, I think society is uh, very calm, concerning to what kind of crisis we have, how the financial system is influencing the whole society. Our society is based on, uh, on the capital system and the financing industry is, the, is, the, is on the top. So what they do is affecting us. And from my perspective, we all ask too, not, not enough questions. It's a parallel world, the financing world. Yeah? They were affecting the crisis, and we asked them to solve the crisis. And we are, don't ask questions. We just, everything what they say, we keep for sure. We don't request the system. We, we think we are incompetent. But I, what, what I try to do is to and, and mystify. How did you find your, your character? How did you find Voss? Um, yeah, I was looking for, for a protagonist. Um, two, uh, three, three years ago, I, uh, I became a father. And uh, I got the feeling that what's going on right now is affecting his life. Then I was looking for a uh, protagonist, but it's very difficult to find them. Because they, this is a parallel world. There's no reason for them to, to, to start telling me stories. Because as soon as they start, it's, it's like a family. Yeah? As soon as they 
leave their family, they are thrown out. So it's very tough to find them. And uh, I, a FOSS I found by, uh, by contact of a politician of uh, the Bundestag, German Bundestag. And FOSS was a, some kind of an inside consultant. In the first second, it was, it was clear for both of us that we have to do the film. You, you said before that you wanted to make this film to talk to non-banking people and to explain the financial crisis to them. Do you see that this film is, um, could be used as an, an educational tool to, kind of, to, to teach people about that? Um, it's not an educational tool in the sense of uh, telling people how financial theories are working, but it's a tool to tell people that financial theory isn't the only theory you have to trust. I'm trying to uh, concentrate on different angles of financing. It's also a personal perspective, it's, it's psychology. It's about manipulating people or leading people to do something. Don't be afraid of the system. You have to, they have to answer your questions and you have to ask the questions. That's, I think, that's the biggest problem we have. We don't ask questions. Mauro, you must have a Swiss bank account. I do, <laughs> <laughs> but unfortunately, it's the numbers are um, not that high. Well, as it, do you have a Swiss bank account? <laughs> no. no. <But laughs> since she get you since one. childhood, this is the this is the thing. Is this, the Swiss bank account it the is. key to it great success? Absolutely, and about discretion. So mm -hmm. now we are going to say a very discreet goodbye to our two Oscar winners. Thank you so much, Melissa Leo and Maru Muller, for being here this afternoon. We really appreciate it. Thank you. Next up, we talk to another jury member, Gunit Manga, who has a film here at the film festival called The Lunchbox. We had a delicious meal with her at Hiltel. Take a look. Every day, every housewife in Mumbai prepares a lunchbox to be delivered to her husband at work. They say just one in every 16 million lunchboxes doesn't reach the right husband. The movie Dabba is about that lunchbox that goes astray, spurring a love story between characters Ines and Mr. Fernandez. Dabba premiered at Cannes and was recently screened at the Zurich Film Festival. We sat down with one of the producers of Dabba, Gunit Monga, to talk about the film. Tell me a little bit about this story. How did this story come to you? How did the script come to you? Lunchbox. Lunchbox, yes. Actually, I met uh, Ritesh Patra, the director of the film, um, in, the, in the Goa film market at a script lab. Mm -hmm. And uh, there was a whole separate film that he was working on that I absolutely fell in love with. And uh, we started working on another film together. And somewhere down the line, after three months, he said, uh, you know, I'd, I'm, I'm looking at taking a break for 15 days and writing Lunchbox. So I was like, hmm, how will you have a script in 15 days? He said, no, no, I, I think I have a story that I just want to say it's coming to me. Mm -hmm. um, and there was a script which worked on paper and there were international partners who were interested in our previous film. So we moved everything to this film. And uh, that was two years ago, and then we just went ahead and made it. You had a lot of, <clears throat> a lot of different producers from different countries on yes. this. How did that work with them? This must have been challenging. So, um, I, so firstly, everybody unanimously fell in love with the script. We kept meeting a lot of uh, producers mm -hmm. from around the world. Um, and, and, and the script was appreciated a lot. And somewhere we found our partners. Um, who were equally passionate as us and and we were willing to go all the way in putting this together. And this is also India's first Indo-French German co-production. Mm -hmm. It was complicated to begin with but I had such great partners that they've done this before and they helped me do this before and and uh, we had support from the Indian government and great. yeah we pulled it off. Um, <clears throat> I have a question about Bollywood and about yeah. the rest like Western Europe's kind of a, uh, idea that every film that comes out of India is a yeah. Bollywood film and yeah. what, what does that mean and why is it important that not every film is or what are your thoughts about that? Actually we've been tagged Bollywood which is really unfair mm. and it has been difficult for me to go in a meeting and say okay I come from India and the first thing they say oh you're from Bollywood mm. but my films do not represent Bollywood or the meaning of Bollywood mm. so we'd like to call ourselves um, Indian cinema and uh, we'd like to define it um, like this way, but yeah. Well, that's it for today. Thank you for joining us again for ZFF Daily. Don't forget to come back tomorrow for another show.